Hey, Jude's back. Hi. It's very exciting. We're starting a new series where we, as archaeologists, watch historical movies that either have archaeology or important parts of history in them. Uh, we drink wine, themed snacks, and then we critique them for their archaeological accuracy. Yeah, or yeah. inaccuracy. Or inaccuracy. <laughs> so, of course, number one on the docket <clears throat> had to be... Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. Raiders of the Lost Ark. The reason that yeah. probably 90% of archaeologists today became archaeologists. Here it goes. Let's Enjoy. watch it. Hi. Yes, Raiders. Indiana. All right. Yes. All the Egyptian themed snacks here. We've got koshari, baba ganoush, hummus. Dates, tahini. We got themed alcohol, German Coast Double IPA. What, what? To match onto the video. Yeah. Here we go. Yes. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Oh, you also wouldn't try the poison because the poison is meant to kill. <laughs> Gonna kill you. <laughs> what is he? So the main rule number one is don't lick random things. Don't lick, unless it's rock. On survey. You lick rock, you lick, lick rock. You lick bone, because bone sticks. Unethical, but yes, you technically can. <laughs> they do us, We haven't do. done an ethics video. No. So. Oh, this part. Oh. This part right here, this freaking map right here. Let's talk about this missing map piece. That does not happen. We don't have pieces of maps that show us things. We have sometimes artifacts and things that can, you know, be considered a map yeah. and can guide us to something. Gives us hints. All, yeah. But, um, but archaeology sites come together relative to an yeah. amalgamation of different clues and things that you found and understood and read about and seen to get you to yeah. one place. And even that one place is not necessarily going to be the place. No, no such thing as treasure maps in the actual world of archaeology no. as Lame as that sounds, it's even cooler because we do so much more detective work. We do. It's a lot more sleuthing than just yeah. like finding the missing map piece yeah. to uh, stick it in. Yeah. Oh, you need those. Didn't take a picture. <laughs> Where's the documentation? That is true. You do get a lot of wildlife when you're doing yeah. Yeah, a lot of it. I had a scorpion in my boot. That's dangerous. So we get lots of questions about these booby traps, and no, you do not find booby traps in archaeological sites. I almost wish. At all. Oh, it would be amazing if yeah. there were. So no archaeologists have ever found a functional booby trap. Like, sure, we get a lot of inscribed curses, especially, you know, like King Tut's tomb, all that crazy stuff. There's a curse. <laughs> That's one of those things where um, it's uh, Hollywood is really making it a big deal. So no booby traps and if there is something that's 4,000 years old that actually has lasted, the technology has lasted and held up to actually function, that's that would insane. be like the best find ever. That's like, like a sign. technological advance technological. X amount of time ago. Oh my gosh. So exact, and that means we wouldn't be setting off the booby traps. We would be analyzing the booby traps and not kind of just walking through them to find the gold statue at the end yeah. because the technology is what archaeologists are really into instead of like the big shiny show pieces that everyone thinks we are also there'd be a lot of ethics involved oh my god when you really think about it yeah there's be, <laughs> be a lot of issues for sending mm -hmm. in your students to booby traps like just go poison darts there yeah. who cares stupid <laughs> that often yes admittedly I for twice not that far off <laughs> oh no you just ruined the whole thing so let's discuss the fact that these people found this large large one single piece wow. of rock that they carved into, into a perfect a, sphere. A perfect sphere. <laughs> this is why you always make friends with the locals when you're doing archaeology. You want them to yeah. um, understand and appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. 
the big snake in the plane, Jock! If you're an archaeologist, depending on where you work, you better not hate snakes. Yeah, there's always snakes. No matter where you go. Snakes all over the world. And they love history, just like we do. Yeah. Neo, meaning new and lithic. I-T-H-I-C, meaning stone. All right, let's get back to this site. Turk Dean Barrow near Hazelton. Turk Dean Barrow near Hazelton. Yes, that is actually a village. Turk Dean is actually a tiny little village in England, and there do seem to be two Neolithic barrows around it. Now, a barrow is actually just a burial mound, so if you do Near Eastern archaeology, it's a tell essentially. One of them has actually been excavated, but it was only excavated in the years between 1980 and 1982. So it doesn't really fit with the current setting of 1936 in the movie, but it does fit for when the movie came out, which is in 1981. Yay! That's kind of cool. So, that worked out. Yeah. Kinda. I got it all figured out. There's only one place you can sell it, Marrakesh. I need $2,000. Listen to the deal, boy. I brought some people to see you. Look, I got these pieces. They're good pieces, Marcus. Look, <laughs> Indiana. Yes, the museum will buy them as usual. No questions asked. Yes, they are nice. They're worth at least the price of a ticket to America. He's just giving all these pieces to the museum. Yes, yes, the museum will buy them, of course. Like, if you went to a museum and you just saw a bunch of rocks and stuff with no actual, you know, information, information like no year, it was just like, a, like not even just description. If you don't read that, but like the year kind of thing. And you saw, would you actually be interested in seeing an entire museum with that? Exactly what's happening. No record. You don't do that. No it's context. He just pulls it out. Yeah. Now what? You know, he's trying to sell artifacts for a plane trick ticket to yeah. Mar Marrakesh? To Marrakesh. You see, over the last two now, years, the Nazis have had teams of archaeologists running around the world looking for all kinds of religious artifacts. Hitler's a nut on the subject. He's crazy. He's obsessed with the occult. So Hitler was actually a huge occultist, but not as big as his best friend, his number two, Heinrich Himmler. I don't know. Himmler was an interesting guy, okay? Uh, he was really into the occult and all this like spirituality, super, uh, supernatural stuff. Uh, he was the official leader of the Annenerber. It was essentially a research society for archaeological and uh, German history to try and like really buff up the Germans and of course that also famous Aryan race. This society was formed in 1935, which does fit with the Indiana Jones film. So it does mean that they were active actually in a couple archeological sites. They went to Ethiopia, they went to Iceland, they did some work in South America, but never in Egypt. Now the cool thing with these people is that they were actually the founders of pseudo-archaeology. They were really big on just finding information to fit their own storyline, right? They were only going after certain things and interpreting things to make the Germans seem better. The lost ark. Yeah, the ark of the covenant, the chest the Hebrews used to carry around the Ten Commandments. What do you what mean, do you ten mean the commandments? You're talking about the Ten Commandments? Yes, the actual Ten Commandments, the original stone tablets that Moses brought down out of Mount Harab and smashed, if you believe in that sort of thing. The ark of the covenant, to mm. discuss that as a whole. In the Bible, it does say that the ark was constructed by um, Moses' people to bring the Ten Commandments down. Mm -hmm. However, though, nobody really knows where it went after the Babylonians sieged uh, Jerusalem. That was in 500-ish, 500-600 BC. Yeah. And funny enough, on the note of everything, a team of German archaeologists, fittingly, yeah. um, has rec recently, recently, yeah, I think in the last couple of years, recently-ish, um, claimed that the this ark is located the uh, was it Saint Mary Saint Mary's Saint of Mary Zion? Zion in Ethiopia. In Ethiopia. So. <laughs> Apparently it's there. Full circle. <laughs> yeah, they found it. It's in Ethiopia. Apparently, the there was like a guardian of the ark the in only. this church. Yes, only he can see the ark. Yeah. So it hasn't been confirmed that the ark is there because only one person can look at it. Yeah. So Nazis have discovered Tanis. Just what does that mean to you, uh, Tanis? Well, well, the city of Tanis is one of the possible resting places of the lost ark. However, an Egyptian pharaoh Shishan. yes, invaded the city of Jerusalem around about 980 BC, and he may have taken the ark back to the city of Tanis and hidden it in a secret chamber called the Well of Souls. However, about a year after the pharaoh had returned to Egypt, the city of Tanis was consumed by the desert in a sandstorm which lasted a whole year, wiped clean by the wrath of God. <laughs> uh, Tanis was actually never 
cited in the Bible as a possible site for the Ark of the Covenant, and it was also not destroyed by a sandstorm. The Nile actually silted up over time over there and it dried up like the dock. You couldn't get all the ships in for the harbor. So it was actually later abandoned as the seat of the pharaohs who later moved. But people were still living there well into Roman times. They just kind of like went into disrepair and kind of got abandoned like most archaeological sites do. Yeah. And it wasn't actually like magically found in the 1930s. Excavations have actually been going on there since the 19th century. It does not have a map room and it does not have a well of souls. Because you can guess where the well of souls is? Jerusalem. Yeah, it's not in Egypt, guys. Don't believe them. Shishak was actually the pharaoh Shashank, who did rule in Tanis in the 21st uh, dynasty, so that is correct. But uh, he never actually took the Ark with him when he raided Jerusalem. He raided Jerusalem in the uh, 10th century BC, which is BCE, BCE, uh, which is about uh, 980. He did, he did do a raid in Jerusalem, didn't take the Ark. The Ark was only said to have been lost when the Babylonians raided uh, Jerusalem and sacked Jerusalem in 587 BCE. They want you to get a hold of the Ark before the Nazis do, and they're prepared to pay handsomely for it. Archaeologists never have a house this nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, ancient gold, yeah, like, really good condition, considering. It's in really good condition. Hello, Hello. The, the Germans, Germans are here! Hello! This is a warning. Not to disturb the Ark of the Covenant. That's convenient. Who knew when everyone was in the same one place and it says to not disturb, you know, someone else's things. This was the old way. This means six kadam high. About 72 inches. A kadam is a proper unit of measurement that's actually accurate. Yeah. Um, it measures the same as 24 centimeters or 9.5 inches for our American friends. Uh, friends. Yes. I told you not to be premature in your communicator, Berlin. I have so many things about this. Lies! This is not, an exact this is not what a dick looks like! Just not dealing My God. That is just a chaos, chaotic site. That's... They literally just hired people to dig and they're not... There's no documentation. No order. No order. Where's the cameras walking on site? Right. Egyptian architecture is not domed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, why is there a dome? Oh, so what color are those why are there Why are there rocks like this? There's no wall? Like, a little... Wait a minute. What kind of weird hieroglyphs are these? Is he reading them backwards? Oh my god, he's totally reading them backwards. On behalf of these hieroglyphs, Despite the fact that he's choosing one little symbol, when you have to consider in languages like this, he has several symbols making up a word, mm -hmm. despite that, um, he's reading it wrong. He's going from right to left. Not every single one of these uh, languages are the same as, say, Arabic and Hebrew mm -hmm. in the Middle East. He should be reading it in the way, going towards the direction that the animals and the figures and whatnot are facing. Yeah, so That's if the animal is facing this way, his head's here, you read into him. Yes. Like that. Yes. So it can go any way, up, down, right, left, as long as whichever way the animal is facing. And it goes for any ancient language. We yeah. have to learn to understand how they're supposed to be read because not all of it is how we perceive it to be today. So. <laughs> Archaeology yeah. is magic! Oh. Damn. He is documenting though. Like look at him mm. measuring. Yeah. He's doing his thing. I'm a drink to that. Yeah. Good job, Cheers Archie. Cheers to Andy. Yeah. Cheers, Andy. Bravo. You did something right. Wait, how is nobody noticing that he's there? Okay, bring the pry bars in! Pry bars! <laughs> this is what looters look like. I guess that's the title. Raiders of the Lost Ark. They're raiding it. They're not archaeologying uh, it. They're not excavators man. of the Lost Ark. <sighs> pry bars. Pry bars. Open it. Don't do it. And you don't do anything about it before. Mm. Record it. Yeah. Anyway. Good, good. That's it. Watch your clothes. This is how you get smallpox. Yeah. Or any other ancient Ooh. Air hissing. All of that. That's true. The ancient air, bacteria. The air does hiss. The air does hiss. Yeah. Oh, don't jump off the old thing. Don't touch things at museums. Don't touch Anubis in a cave. Don't like repel off of his teeth. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, you can pick up that granite, no problem. 
Oh, look, it's a big ass. Oh. Wow. Oh, then they just break it. They didn't take a picture. Like even if you just document by visual, if you lose yeah. it, you still have the information. That's and the point. Like, I found it. It looked like yeah. this. Angels. Going. Oh, those are angels. They're dabbing. <laughs> I think you still learn about the dabbing. Wait, wait. Dabbing is. Yeah. Oh, okay. The angelic dab. dabbing angels. <laughs> angelic dab. Angelic dab. Yeah. Big explosia ass. Just like every time on site! Yeah, it's really blow things up! Oh no. The accent is here. Let's see. How much wine have you Now, while there are a bunch of stories about cursed objects, if you touch them, handle them, turn something the right way, things like that, write them wrong, write them wrong, they're not actually real. You know, everyone thinks about King Tut's curse, but actually everyone died because they went inside of a tomb right when they opened it, and there was all this old air in there with all this old bacteria, and they all breathed it in. And that's how they died, okay? The mummy didn't come after them. And obviously, the Ark of the Covenant does not have, like, weird ghost ladies that turn into, um, like, S ghouls. Skulls, ghouls. Creepy things. Yeah. And that melts your face. That does not happen in archaeology. I wouldn't be many no. else around if that was the case. Who? Would not. Yeah. That's a much less attractive job opportunity. Yeah. The supernatural is not something that we deal with mm -hmm. with archaeology. Nah, not quite. <laughs> Archaeology collections and storage space. That's true. <laughs> 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 yeah. Everyone needs to just reorganize the whole This thing. is a big moral of the story. It's one of the it's ten agents so of deterioration so right oh. here, man. Good. <sighs> well, did you did it. Congratulations. Cheers. You did it. So that was Indiana Jones. That was Raiders of the Lost Ark. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Watching. Still a great movie. Uh, very. You know, he's a horrible archaeologist, but we all still love him. He's our okay. mascot. We all are mascot. still inspired. Yeah. Stay tuned for a lot more videos from Jude and I. You know, sitting down, watching, talking about them. Here are our Instagram, social media handles. If you want to follow up on uh, everything that we're doing, definitely don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. There are tons more to come. We have a whole list going on. And if you want to support the blog, you can always do so on Patreon. Uh, my link to that is in the description below. If you want to get access to some amazing behind-the-scenes content, like all of our blooper reels, <laughs> all that fun stuff, it's all on Patreon. Go ahead and do that there. And as always, stay dirty, my friends. <laughs>